All right, I've got another Photoshop tutorial for you, and this time we're, we're looking at a stylized kind of smashed rock text effect. And you can do this pretty much with any type of font that you want. And it's really easy. It's basically cut down into three parts. First is setting up your text, then adding a texture, and then adding a few little layer styles to uh, really make it kind of jump off the page. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and open a new document, and I'm going to use a standard 1920 width by 1080 height and the resolution will be set to 72 dpi and the first step is to go ahead and get our, our background ready and I'm gonna go ahead and just kinda layer this on top of a rock photo uh, it kinda gives it a, a pretty cool effect to have rock text over kind of a rock image so I'm gonna start with kind of a darker background though so I'm gonna go ahead and create some new guides so view new guide and for the vertical I'm gonna do 50% and then go back up to view new guide and for the horizontal I'm also going to do 50 percent so we can find our center point here for the document alright so let's go to our gradient tool and we're going to make sure the gradient preset is selected on the first one hit OK now we want to make sure that we have the radial gradient checked and for our foreground let's do kind of a mid-level gray and for our background, let's do almost black, a dark, dark gray. And click OK. Now let's go ahead and let's drag a gradient from the center point and just fill our background and create kind of a spotlight effect of a darker uh, background. All right. So now let's go ahead and open up our stone rock texture. And I found this off Shutterstock. And it's a rather large, uh, just flat rock texture. So let's go ahead and drag this onto our document. And this effect seems to work better with a smaller, uh, finer texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control T and I'm going to scale this down probably half, so 50% on the height and width. And it doesn't fill our document now, but we're going to go ahead and kind of quickly tile it to make it fit the document. So I'm just going to kind of move this one to the upper left hand corner a little bit. I'm going to press Control J. I'm going to go to Edit, Transform, Rotate 180 degrees. So we've created a duplicate layer of our, of our rock texture and we've just simply flipped it over basically. So I'm going to hold Shift and I'm just going to kind of drag it to the right side. Now I'm going to take my eraser tool and we're going to get rid of this hard edge. So I'm going to take my eraser tool and use a round brush. I need to load uh, my basic brushes again. So just a soft round brush, kind of large. Around 400 pixels is good. And I'm just going to simply erase that edge to kind of fade it out. Now press Control E to merge those layers together and again press Control J, Edit, Transform, Rotate 180 and this time let's move this one downward. Grab your eraser tool again and let's simply get rid of the hard edge and press Control E. There we go. So now we have kind of a smaller texture that isn't uh, it, it looks a little more random so it looks a little more uh, uh, real so I'm gonna go ahead and hide my guides for a sec now let's go ahead and press control J again because we need a duplicate layer of this rock texture but I'm gonna go ahead and hide that for now so my, bo my bottom most rock layer I'm gonna set this blend mode to overlay it'll give us a nice kind of background effect here so let's go ahead and play around with some text. Above that layer, let's go ahead and write out some text. I'm just going to use the color white for my text. And I've been using a font called Chinese Rocks that you can get off defont.com. It's a freebie. Let me find it here. All right, now I'm going to simply type in smash. And let's turn our guides back on. In guides, you can turn on and off by going to View, Show, Guides, 
where the shortcut as you can see for PC is control plus semicolon. So let's go ahead and press control T on our type and holding shift just drag out the text until it's about a size that that you like. I'm just going to move it back up into the center here. And I'm going to hide my guides again. Now, we're not going to be able to edit this type after we do this effect. So make sure that whatever text you're going to use, make sure it's at a, a larger size. And if it's going to be uh, a word, say, in a, in a logo or a headline or something, uh, yeah, make sure it's a larger size that you can scale it down if need be. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on our text layer and I'm going to go to rasterize type. And this is CS6 so previous versions it might just say rasterize layer uh, might be the same thing. So now let's go ahead and kind of break this up a bit. Let's go to our uh, excuse me our polygon selection tool and I'm going to zoom in once and this is where you just kind of have fun with it and just kind of go free form. And the first step we're going to do is we're going to do a pass where we, where we work on rotating, slightly rotating parts of the text. And then we'll do another pass where we actually move parts of the text. So let's go ahead and just start clicking around. I'm going to click straight through kind of the middle of my S here. And you just kind of want to give it kind of a broken rock outline and I'm gonna select this entire right side and make our selection. Now if you right click you can say layer via cut. Now press control T and move that rotation point to either the top left or bottom left and just ever so slightly rotate that text. Like so. And what we've done is we've given it kind of a crack through the S. So press control E to merge those back together. And let's just keep doing the same thing to each letter. So I'm going to go through the M here. And I'm going to make sure I select the entire right hand side. Right click, layer via cut. And this time let's vary it up. So I did this this first one, bottom uh, lower left. And this time I'm going to do upper left to kind of keep smash in, basically keep it in one line. So I'm going to come up here with my rotation point, and I'm simply going to move this one back a little bit. Hit return, control E. And we're just going to keep going. So it doesn't have to be precise, whatever word you used. Uh, if you have a lot of letters, you don't have to do every single letter. You can just kind of keep going until you like what the outcome is. So I'm going to move that one just a bit, control E. And let's do this a couple more times. Layer via cut, control T. Move that rotation point. Rotate the text, control E. Rinse and repeat. And keep going. It does look better though to have a kind of a this big cracked look at least one going through each letter it does seem to help it. So control E. So let's back out so we can see what we look like. And it's it's getting there pretty pretty well. I'm liking how this is turning out. So next is to kind of break it up a little further, um, the smaller pieces. So let's do the kind of the same thing. Go back to your polygon uh, selection tool, but just select pieces of the letter. You don't want to select the entire thing. So I'm going to go ahead and select a part of this. S here. Actually, let me redo that. I just want this top corner, kind of like so. Layer via cut, Control T. I'm going to rotate this one a bit more, Control E. Then I'll do the bottom down here. Layer via cut, Control T. This time I'll move it this way. And you just keep going. You you do you don't want to kind of you don't want to really go overboard though. You just want to do just enough where it it gives it that that kind of smashed look, but you're not destroying the word, so it's still readable. You can still tell what it is. And just kind of keep going. 
So this time, so this one, since I selected a piece of it, I'm going to simply just kind of cursor it out a couple and kind of pull it out. And there, as you can see, it's starting to, to look like really cracked text. So one last step, I would keep going through this S and H like I did through the first three letters and just keep doing the same thing. But uh, for time's sake, let's go ahead and jump to where we actually move parts out and make parts of the text looks like, look like it's chipped away. So that can be done pretty easily by taking more triangular pieces. So say the top of this S, if I come down, kind of like so, and then simply just come right back up <clears throat> and take kind of like a ragged pie shape out of it. So layer via cut, and then with your, your uh, arrow cursors, just kind of cursor that out and move it around a bit until you like how it is and press control E and do this a few more times this helps break up the text and give it kind of a, a different shape it's like here there be a cut and it's good to do it kind of where it, it joints where in this case where the cross of the H comes through stuff like that so control E and corners work well too so kind of come down into corners and you can have pieces right next to each other so again it's just kind of to your preference and you just want to make sure that you're not uh, losing the overall shape of the word so you can tell what it is alright so we have our smash text smashed <laughs> now let's go ahead and we're going to give this a drop shadow so layer effects drop shadow and we will really want to peel this up against the page so let's go ahead and make the size rather large and turn the opacity up all the way and the distance you can kind of move it around just to give it some depth now with PC if you hold control over your layer thumbnail and select that layer thumbnail you get a selection of your uh, your layer it'll it'll find the edges so let's go ahead and put the the eyeball icon back on our rock layer from way back and make sure that layer is selected and simply select the create layer mask icon and let me move it into the screen for you so layer mask icon is just this square with a circle in it you can go like that now let's go ahead and kind of peel this away from the background a little bit more so I'm going to press control J create one more copy and press control J again so we're gonna have three copies of our smash uh, masked texture let's hide the top two the first one let's go ahead and give this a slight gradient overlay so what we're gonna do is select your gradient and for the first one just turn the opacity to zero percent and for the next one let's pick a color so let's do maybe kind of a for this kind of like a yellowish seems to work kinda of cool and let's go ahead and copy that hex value control C on PC and make sure that both you want the whole spectrum to be both colors so you don't get a uh, a little bit of a darker shade in between and hit OK and this one you can go ahead and either turn the opacity down you can play with blending modes um, see how we're just adding a little bit of color to help give it some definition and pull it away from the background so maybe something like that let's go ahead and give this one a bevel and a boss and let's go ahead and turn the depth up pretty high and the size let's turn it up pretty good but we're really gonna soften it it's kinda of the trick to this first one for the shadow mode for the opacity just turn that all the way down and this is just to kinda of give it a little bit of an edge but not make it uh, keep it subtle so that looks kinda of cool so press OK now let's go toggle on the next layer and for this one turn the fill down to zero and for this one let's also give it a gradient overlay so we're gonna do the same process let's just pick another color so I'm gonna do kind of an orange so copy that hex value go to the other color paste that hex value and turn the opacity down to zero so we get a gradient like we did before that fades from the top to the bottom 
hit OK. Or actually, let's do one more thing. Let's go ahead and grab the left slider and just kind of go to the halfway point. Hit OK. Now, for this one, you can kind of play around blending modes. I'm going to set it to overlay. Um, I'm also going to turn the opacity down a little bit. So this will just give it a little bit more of a warmer color up top, but we'll still have a little bit of the yellow coming through, and we should be good to go. But you can play around with that. It doesn't have to be warmer colors. You can use soft, uh, cooler colors, blues, greens, whatever. And let's go ahead and click OK for that. Now our final layer, let's go ahead and toggle that on. Again, turn the fill to zero. And for this one, we're just going to give it a bevel and emboss, but we're going to kind of give it a, a, a much harder bevel. So bevel and emboss. Technique should be chisel hard. Size should be re pretty small, so maybe a one or a two. Uh, highlight mode, you can turn that all the way up to pretty much 100%. And the, and the, uh, the shadow mode, you can also kind of play around with that. Um, however you like it. You don't want the soften on at all. Let's go ahead and turn the depth up. And there we go. You can also, over this background, you can create a new layer. And if you want to kind of knock some pieces out, go ahead and create a new layer above it. And since we've set our rock layer to overlay, you can use a, a another soft brush. So turn the hardness way down and turn the, the size up. And go ahead and paint on some black areas. And this will give it a little more added depth and shadow. And once you find kind of a shape that you like, just go ahead and turn the opacity down a little bit until you get kind of what you what you like. So that helps vary up the background a little bit and helps peel the text away a bit more. So that's about all there is to it. Um, like I said, it's it's the the most tedious time is going through and and breaking apart your text. Um, but it's a lot of fun. You can get a lot of effects out of this, and it's not a photorealistic smash rock, but it's more of a stylized effect um, that gives you a cool shape, and really, um, it makes for a good uh, one-color logo doing this effect just to, to regular text. So you get kind of a logo out of it, and you get more of a uh, piece of artwork out of it. All right, hope you dig it, hope you like it, and I'll be back with more later on. All right, see ya.